Hello, everybody. Jess Arce, dys America's dyslexia expert here today with Laura Jackson. And she is a dyscalculia expert, mom, blogger, and author. She is a new member of our group, our parent support group, and I'm really excited to be able to share with you guys our conversation about tools and tricks to help with dyscalculia. In addition to that, I also have written a, an article about dyslexia with some tools that you can use, seven tools to be exact, and that um, will either be attached to this video or you can request a copy of it at info at lexialearners.com. So let's get started with our interview with Laura. Um experts I've been following, they say, you know, learn the two times table, which can be thought of as doubling a number. Um, the 10 times, which you can get to with um, just kind of working on it a lot, but then that those are basically the two you're going to remember. And then the five times table is learned because they learn to do something called halving. So taking something and breaking it in half. And so you have the 10 times table and you um, divide it in half and that gets you the five times but all the others are going to be worked out with reasoning and logic and we're not even going to attempt memorization of them um well is i'm sorry to interrupt you <laughs> but i have i have the solution for all the other ones and that's um the program times tales have you have you heard of yes. that one i have and thoughts on that um and you may not agree but well, I do my own no, no. version of it. Yeah, we actually we actually sell um, a video for parents because I don't want parents to just buy their program and do it the way that they teach it. Yeah, but, it's very um, cute. It's how they how well, they we don't that. we don't use the videos at all. I mean, yeah. when I started teaching it, they didn't even have the videos. It was just a flip book. And so I, we teach it using the flip book and they just, we go over the story repeatedly and, and the stories stick in their head. And then they have, you know, a visual because they've repeated the story so many times. Yes. So. Yeah. So if, if parents are, are really wanting that, especially like you think about when you go to school and you want to like be able to say they memorize the times tables and that makes sense to me. I'm so the times me. tales story is like the sixth grade class played musical chairs for 24 hours so it's a picture of uh six sixth graders and their head is the number six uh -huh. and they're going around a chair which is the number four and okay. so then you just have to remember 24 hours um and so then you just remember six times four equals 24. Four times six equals 24 yeah. and then flip it around and divide it yeah so the stories are really short too uh -huh. which i know there's some other um stories out there i own another a copy of another one too yeah, but those too. stories are so long yeah that you know it's too long-winded to remember it um <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> then you have another problem you're like whoa yeah yeah what was i doing yeah that, that's the other thing what happened with the dyscalculix too is like Say they remember from the jingle or a story but then she'll be like now what were we doing you know like <laughs> like it's like the memory the working memory is so short on like oh well we are working on six times four. Oh yes you know <laughs> like it's like they moved on to the solution and then they forgot back here what what were we doing so <laughs> some of that now though is just kind of um because we understand that about it uh-huh we can both laugh about it or just uh -huh. kind of, she'll be like oh there's that dyscalculia again you know like make it into i think before it was so stressful it was like oh my gosh she's not remembering why is she not remembering you know and and then now it can just be like it's okay it'll come back and or it won't and we'll redo it again tomorrow um but there's a lot more patience for that you know? right because we understand it that there's a reason for that and it's yeah. not like you're stupid or you're dumb or you didn't work hard enough right exactly um, so that that's helpful too so what are you what is your objective what are you doing with 
the dyscalculia and what the... What doing? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Well, I not combine what you love with like what you're doing with your day. So I started writing a blog um, called Discovering Dyscalculia and the pandemic started and it was all just kind of crazy. Um, but I started blogging about our experience because when we were brand new to the scene, I was like Googling mom blog on dyscalculia. Like I was like, isn't anyone talking about this? And so I thought, well, I'm just going to write what I couldn't find myself. So I started doing that. And then a GHF press, the gifted homeschoolers forum, um, part of their group contacted me and they said, we found your blog. Would you write a book? And I thought, that's crazy because I had just started writing um, using the artist way with Julia Cameron and writing daily and started the blog. And so anyway, I thought, well, who am I to write a book? And then I thought, what great experience. They're going to give me an editor and teach me how to write a book. So let's oh, do wow. that. <laughs> and uh, so I just did that. Um, and... It just was published a couple weeks ago. Uh, you can find it on lauramjackson.com um, slash book, or it's just on Amazon. It's called Discovering Dyscalculia. And I just wrote the story of our family's journey with it and what we've learned and uh, a little bit about some of the research on it. Um, I wrote about homeschooling, the part that we did, and also just things like evaluations and how to do those and where to get an evaluation. And then I talked about um, some of the hard emotions that come with having a learning disability, the anxiety, and just support for parents that way. So going forward, my big goal with this is just to like grow dyscalculia advocacy and awareness where it can be something where people are just more aware of it. So I write a weekly Saturday email and that goes out to mostly parents, but there's a lot of teachers on there as well who are just learning about it themselves. Um, and I have big dreams for programs for kids that are dyscalculic and really just wanting to come around them and support them in the areas that they are, that they shine in and help them where they are with the math, but also just to have a greater understanding for themselves and compassion so they aren't um, held back. Most schools, it's gonna take them forever to catch up, to be able to teach oh, yeah. really most of these learning disabilities. So if, if parents can find tutoring um, or get tutored themselves on how to help their child, then I think that's kind of the quickest way right now. You know yeah so i was super excited to see find your website and see that oh that's what they're doing do you do online um like what what's what's happening with it's probably all shifting and now the pandemic's waning but like do you guys do in person and online or is it mostly in person or so before covid it was a hundred well it wasn't a hundred percent in person we did mostly in person it was yeah. about 80 percent in person and about 20 percent online yeah. and once covid hit um i closed up my shop in orange county and um and now we only do online tutoring like that's all we we will ever do because we have found it to be so effective only about 15 percent of kids can't focus well enough to do it online um, we find some of them do better with the online because they're, they're sitting in the comfort of their home. They're not spending an hour traveling to us in traffic and then an hour traveling home, you know, yeah. so. Um, yeah, they, do you find it's more yeah. consistent even because they can get there? I mean, well, I mean, it was consistent it. before when it was in person, too, because it needs to be consistent. Yeah. Um, there's some families that just are not consistent, but it's more, it's more the families. Yeah. That just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We got, they got other priorities. What do you, um, what do you find is best like several times a week or once a week or like, what's the kind of the norm when people. A minimum tutor? of two days a week. Okay. And yeah. when we first started doing math tutoring, I did one day a week. 
But I found that that's just not, it's not good enough because yeah. they have memory issues, Yeah, you know, exactly. so they really need to lock it in um, through at least twice a week of tutoring. And for math, I feel like 30 minutes is ideal. Yeah. If, if they After can do that is kind of yeah glaze over. Yeah. Like, and, <laughs> yeah. And with math, they need to do homework, um, yeah. practice it in between if yeah. they're if their school is flexible or they're not in traditional school, it's ideal for them to just focus on what their tutor has taught them yeah, and just uh, practice yes, that totally. for, you know, three other days a week. Yeah. Um, but sometimes they have to do traditional school and they just don't have time to do, um, to practice yeah. three more days a week, but it, that's ideal. Yeah, that makes um, that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Yeah, and and um we actually use a um a homeschool program that was created by a homeschool mom for anybody. Um mm -hmm. but we she has manipulatives on her in her book and then um we we use online manipulatives cuz it's, you know, absolutely Yeah essential that they use manipulatives yeah. for the understanding and, and just the comprehension and everything. Yeah. So that's what we use um, after we do touch point math for addition and subtraction so yeah. that they're not having to count on their fingers. Yeah, it gives them and, another skill. Yeah. 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 And then for multiplication and division, we use um, times tales. Advocacy is just letting your story be told and letting other others feel empowered in their own story and then, then their ability to to be able to understand their kid and then be able to get what their kid needs for them, you know, with them. So really we talked about that kind of. <laughs> well, awesome. I appreciate the chance to be able to connect with you and just to be able to talk about this more. So Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you Laura so much yeah, for taking I'm sure the time we'll to do this. Be in touch. Yes, definitely. Right. Have a great weekend. Yeah, thanks. You too. Thanks again, Laura, for taking the time out to talk to our group and share your experience and knowledge and with dyscalculia and just working with your daughter. It was so wonderful to learn all the different tools and tricks you have. I can't wait to meet again and we will talk about advocacy for your children because so many times people ask about how to advocate for their ch children and it is up to us as parents to be the advocates for our children until we are able to pass the torch over and teach them how to advocate for themselves because ultimately that is our goal because we're not going to be with them for the rest of their lives we need to teach them how to, uh, as adults, be able to advocate for themselves. So thanks again for joining us today. If this resonates with you, please schedule a free consultation call with me and we can see if we can help your learner achieve great math skills through our unique math program. Ta-ta for now.